Entitled mother fakes service dog and says I don't look disabled. So, I'm in high school and waiting in line for my SD, my service dog. I had just finished for the day and stood outside the main building waiting for a friend. That's when I saw Entitled Mother standing there with her two kids and a Basenji. The Basenji had a pink harness on with a patch on both sides, but I couldn't read what it said from the distance. I thought, hey, nice, a service dog. Well, until more people got out of the main building, the quote-unquote service dog started barking and dragging Entitled Mother towards the many students, and it was on a flexi so Entitled Mother had to pull her service dog back while doing the stupid tss, tss, tss sound to make it quiet down, which obviously didn't work. But now I was starting to realise it was a fake service dog, or a bad ESA, and walked towards the Entitled Mother and the service dog. The service dog tried jumping on me, and the Entitled Mother yet again had to pull it back. I could see the text on its harness. It said, Emotional support on one side and service dog on the other. WTF? Is it a service dog? I asked. Yes, it's for my two kids, Entitled Mother replied. What tasks is it trained to do? Emotional support. Emotional support animals are not allowed in public areas and do not need training. Service dogs are task trained and emotional support isn't a valid task. Well, my kids start feeling down, so I bought them a puppy. Entitled Mother was clearly annoyed. Nonetheless, emotional support animals do not have public access. That's when she dropped the, you don't look disabled, and the, oh yeah, invisible illnesses, never heard of that, bomb. Well, what do you know? You obviously look like someone who doesn't need a support dog. Actually, ma'am, I'm in a long waiting line for a real trained service dog. It's currently being trained for my personal needs. Slapping a vest or harness on a dog, especially a badly behaved one, will bring down real teams. Whatever, she said, leaving the school with her two kids who gave me the stink eye. They got in the car and left. Not as bad as some other posts here, but this really got under my skin. Faking a service dog is against the law, and you can't just go around telling people that they don't look disabled. Our next story was posted by user LipPickles1.0, titled Entitled Mother Furious Because She Can't See and Monitor 18-Year-Old Child's Bank Account Information. Backstory. Mom has unmedicated bipolar. Daughter does her best not to explode. Super straightforward story. Daughter got fed up with the constant and blatant control and moved out maybe two months ago. October or November of 2019. Up until then, her mum had insisted her banking account be linked to her mother's for her daughter's safety. Those safety concerns were things like going to the gas station and buying sodas, going to eat fast food with friends, buying toys for her pets, and monitoring paycheck deposits. Daughter has been keeping up on bills up until this month, as nothing is due until the end of the month so she is paid in full. Entitled Mother is currently on the phone with the bank, screaming and cussing because she can't view the 18-year-old daughter's account. Good chance Entitled Mother wants to withdraw money she is rightfully owed from the daughter's account. It is so hard not to laugh. This is insane. Holy smokes, thanks for the gold. I was just happy for someone to chuckle along with me. Our next story was posted by user... Machow195, titled, Entitled Mother Blamed Young Lady Whose Arm Nearly Cut Off by the Criminal Son. This is not my personal story. I collected it from newspaper. Whoever visit Vietnam will know the, the major traveling vehicle of the country is motorbike. Visiting Vietnam, you can see motorbikes everywhere. However, many robbers also use motorbikes to commit crimes. Do -do -do -do, the more you know. The car star, the criminal son, which is the gang's leader, the young lady, which is the victim of the criminal son and his gang, entitled Mother, the criminal son's mother. The story. In 2012, there was a case about four young adults, about 18, 19, 20 years old, using knives to rob a young lady at night. 
Criminal Sun was the gang's leader. At 8 p.m., YL was riding a SH, which was considered at the most expensive motorbike in my country at the time. Then suddenly, she was attacked by four men to rob the SH. She was slashed by the knives and nearly got one of her arms cut off. Her handbag was stolen by the robbers as well. Fortunately, at that time, there were a few people passing by. The lady screamed for help. The robbers were not able to start the engine of the SH, so they had to give up and run away. The knife wound, which was very deep, was later repaired by surgeons, but she no longer has full use of her arm, according to doctors. Eventually, all of these robbers were arrested. It turns out that the mentioned case was not the first crime these scumbags had committed. They had committed about 15 cases. CS and his gangs were taken to the court, and the fun time began. Entitled Mother was really entitled. She screamed relentlessly at her son's victim. The tramp, YL, is the one to be blamed, not my son. Why the F she would ride such an expensive scooter and wear luxurious jewellery, which encouraged my son to rob her? If I know my son would receive a death sentence, I would bring a knife and stab YL right at the court. My son receives the death sentence because of you rich bullies. My son only cut her arm. He did not kill her. Why the F would he be sentenced to death? Luckily, for the criminal son and entitled mother, but not satisfying for us, because of the changes in the law, criminal son did not receive a death sentence, but a life imprisonment. You can read the news here at vietnamnews.vn slash violent biker robbery gets death dot html. Very interesting. And our next story was posted by user Shy Girl Turned Sassy, titled Entitled Parents. So what if our son is an abusive POS? He's still family. All names have been changed. My best friend, Lena, is married to Jay. They have two daughters and are a beautiful family. Jay has a cousin, Arshat, who physically and psychologically abused his wife, Kate, for years. She finally let him go two years ago with a lot of help from Jay and Lena. They encouraged Kate to leave Arshat and stood by her throughout the messy divorce. Then, most of Jay's family blamed her. She had earlier confided in a few of them, including Arshat's parents about the abuse and had shown them the cuts and bruises that he gave her, but they just acted like it was no big deal. Some even went as far to tell her she should have put up with the abuse to quote-unquote save their marriage. They got mad at Jay when he called the cops on his cousin after witnessing one of his violent outbursts. Jay and Lena have cut Arshat out of their lives, and he is not allowed to come visit to their home or come near their daughters. They have also cut ties with some of the relatives who had sided with Arshat. However, those people just cannot wrap their heads around why Jay and Lena have stopped talking to them. They, particularly the Arshat's parents, have the nerve to call them cruel for dumping Arshat. Their reason is that he's already suffered enough after losing his wife and kids. Arshat's wife got full custody. They keep throwing around the word family as if it excuses their crappy behavior and that they and Arshat should be able to see Lena and Jay's kids. They actually act offended when they're reminded of the hell that Kate went through because of them. However, Lena and Jay have stayed very firm about never letting a domestic abuser or his enablers near their kids ever again, and for that I am fiercely proud of them. And our next story was posted by user FM Lamley, titled Entitled Dad Calls Me Racist When I Don't Let Him Into a No Entry Room and Aggressively Grabs My Chest for My Tag to Get In Himself. Okay, first up, the formatting beat may be weird because I'm on mobile. Also, TLDR at the end. Anyways, so, ED is Entitled Dad and K is his kid. Today was an opening evening for parents at school, and for some reference, I go to a grammar school, so it gets quite busy on these days, and many students often get asked to help out, which included today. I got asked to take round Entitled Dad and Kid on a tour around school, which would take two hours if I took the allocated route, 
the school is really big. When I was about to take them round, he said that he only had 15 minutes spare, and asked me if I could take him around in that time. I told him that I would not be able to take him many places. We eventually narrowed it down to the bottom floor of the main school building, though he got really annoyed and impatient that we couldn't explore more than that in 15 minutes. Anyways, so we got through the most the bottom floor, until we reached the end of a corridor. At the end of this was the entrance to the art section. However, there were in, in exams going on in there, and it was strictly forbidden for students, especially the parents going round the open evening, to go in there, in case of disrupting people doing their exams. Entitled Dad asked me if I could go there, and I said politely that we couldn't. Then he suddenly got really mad, saying, There's people in there. You're not letting me in because I've got darker skin than you. All you white people are so fudging racist. Entitled Dad was Asian, not much darker than me anyways. I'm 25% English, German, and 50% Bangladesh, so I had a slightly tan complexion, but it would be easy to mistake me for being of white ethnicity. I kept as calm as possible, and politely explained that I'm sorry that you feel like that, but I have no prejudice against anybody on their natural appearance. Please do not make such assumptions. I would feel inclined to say that you are slightly racist yourself, speaking about white people as a collective, and grouping us all into this negative category that doesn't fit all of us. And please do not scream profanities at me either. If I went into the art block, I would get a detention. There is cameras covering every inch of this building. It clearly says, no entry to students or visitors on the door. And newsflash, I'm a student and you're a visitor. His face creases up in rage and replies with, Excuse me, do not speak to me with such disrespect. I am older than you, which means you must listen to me. There are so many people in there. I want to see the world famous paintings and artwork that is up there. And my daughter loves art. Why can't you make an exception? You're a fudging invalid. Who even raised you? You are so impolite and can't even let parents in on opening day. What sort of bullcrap is this? Before I could say anything, he swiftly grabbed for my lanyard at my chest, the thing you use to tag doors which unlocks them, and unlocked the door. I don't think it was his intention to touch me in the manner that he did, but I am extremely well developed for 14 and it hurt really bad. I also have a really long history of rape and sexual harassment, and this triggered my trauma. I kind of just fell to the floor and started crying uncontrollably because old memories came back. Entitled Dad heard me sobbing and turned around, looking at me funny. The teachers got alerted when the art door opened because the, del the bell rings and came over. It probably looked like he punched me to the floor the way I was sat. My favorite teacher took me into her classroom and asked what was up. I told her. I'm not extremely sure what happened to Entitled Dad, I'm guessing he probably just got kicked out of the school grounds or something. Update. The school contacted my parents and asked me if I wanted to take any legal action. We are already tied up in this other legal business with some dodgy person living in my dad's rental house for free and couldn't be bothered to press charges, so we didn't. Our next story was posted by user Gated Garden Homes, titled... A racist entitled mother at Universal Studios wants me wheelchair because her son is tired. Good day, gamers. I'm currently sick, so I've been laying back playing Smash and listening to EP stories. And then it reminded me of this story back in 2016. May have been 2017. I'm on mobile, and there will be typos in here, but I'm not sorry for crap. Just for context, at the time, I was a pudgy, Mexican, 14-year-old boy. You read the title, so I don't need to hold your hand on why that's important. I was at Universal for two days, a day for each park, with my mum, my dad, and my evil brother. The first day went swimmingly. Nothing bad happened, and it was great. But the second day is when crap went down. I'm not diagnosed with anything, but every once in a while my ankle will flare up in overwhelming pain, to the point that I can't walk. My parents were reluctant, but they agreed to rent me a wheelchair. Since it's a theme park, they have perfectly accommodated my family and I. In fact, it was a lot better because we didn't have to deal with that locker bullcrap. 
It was funny when the staff would be surprised that I could walk a bit to go on the rides. Everything went well. I got all the Harry Potter stuff I wanted. We screamed our heads off on the rides, and everything else you do at Universal. But of course, since I'm posting here, you know that crap is about to go down. My parents went to this stand to get ice cream, and my brother, who was 12 at the time, was throwing a hissy fit, and stuck near them. At the time, I was getting a hang of a wheelchair driving, so I didn't mind being alone. I went around and looked at the nearby shops. That's when she saw me. Enter the antagonist, the one tramp to rule them all, she who shall not be named. This story's entitled mum, Karen. Obviously, this is all paraphrased. And she says to me, Excuse me? Excuse me? She screamed as if she were Vicky Guerrero. I swiveled around to face her. Hi, I said with a genuine smile, which is the first that has happened in a while. I blame Harry Potter. Hashtag depression vibes. I saw you stand earlier to get on a ride, so it's obvious you were faking being disabled. Get out of the wheelchair, because my son is exhausted, she said, pointing to her nine-year-old boy who poked his head out from behind her enormous back. The son gave me the look of, I'm sorry, and I started to laugh. Fumes spout out of her ears as if she was Elma Fudd. Nah, I said, still laughing. One thing you need to know about me is that I'm an ironic and petty tramp. Nah, nah, do you know who the frick I am? I am Karen Miller. I just looked up for the most generic white last name, sorry. And I was born here in this great country. Unlike you, you stupid boner. Everyone around looked stunned at her words. The son's eyes started to tear up, since he knew he was about to be kicked out of the park. Look at that, you made my baby cry. Now, if you know, I don't take crap from anyone, besides my <coughs> toxic <coughs> family. I started to laugh harder. What are you, Artardy? Well, there's a problem here. I don't like beans. Chuckles came from around. Also, I don't have to explain myself, nor do I do anything you say. You know why? Why? She roared. Because I'm also an American citizen. The other people started laughing, mainly because I was standing up for myself and being petty. It was around this time that my family got out with the ice cream. They scanned the area for me and saw me in front of a steaming white mum and a crying boy. Engage mother bear mode. My mum ran over to me, grabbed my wheelchair, and started walking away from the lady. Where do you think you're going, disrespectful bee? She said, using the Mexican slur again. My mum stopped. What did you say? She asked, turning around and glaring at the woman as if this was some generic anime. Karen froze, fear striking her eyes. G g g g you heard me, she stammered. Before any more confrontation could occur, security arrived. I guess one of the bystanders called them over. Oh, thank goodness, officer. These two are harassing me and my son. No, they aren't, said another random person. Then, several people tried explaining the situation to the security guard. After a bit of questioning, the guard held up his hand. I think I heard enough. Miss Miller, can you and your son follow me? I will escort you out of the park now. We don't tolerate this kind of behavior. He led the lady out. She was kicking and screaming while the son followed, silently crying. I guess he is used to this sort of thing. Me and my family were given fast passes for the rest of the day, and that was sick. Sorry for the abrupt slash rushed ending, but my head is hurting and I want to go back to playing Smash slash writing my manuscript. Thank you for reading. I'll come back here with some more funny entitled parent stories. That is, if I remember. I don't know how to end this, so... Sans? Edit. Thank you everyone for the nice comments. It means a lot. Obviously, this was exaggerated for comedic effect, since it has to be a good story. No, I don't know the entitled mother's true motives, nor do I know what happens to the kid. And our next story was posted by user XXRealMWXX, titled... This is my room, not yours. Backstory. When I was about eight or so, I lived in an apartment. It was relatively big, about 40 stories. 
My parents, my brother, and I lived on the 14th floor, and we had a cool street view from our room. We shared a room. We were just relaxing out in the balcony when the doorbell rings. My parents' room was closer to the door, so my mum went and opened the door. OP is me, M is my mum, D is my dad, EM is entitled mum, there's a difference, AM is apartment management, B is my brother, SK is strange kid. Anyways, keys rattling. Out in the hallway, I heard someone cursing under their breath. M, my mum, opens the door and says, can I help you? Excuse me, what are you doing in my room? What? My room. You're in my room right now. No, this is my room. My family and I live here. You are such a liar. Entitled mother pushes past my mum and sets her stuff down. It was then when I realised the kid with her, who also comes in and promptly drops his smoothie on the floor. We lived near a smoothie shop. Meanwhile, I'm just watching the whole thing play out from the end of the hallway. Entitled mother approaches me and says, What are you doing here, you little turd? And I say, What's a turd? Entitled mother proceeded to list every single alternate word for turd. Being the immature eight-year-old I was, I began giggling. And the shy king starts laughing. And the entitled mother goes, Hush! And slaps the kid. My dad had gone downstairs to get the management. He arrives back upstairs just after the slapped happened. SK starts crying, and the area manager goes, What's going on? And she says, This bee stole my room. I was super scared at this point, and I didn't really know what to do. So I just ran back to my room and closed the door. And B says, What's going on out there? There's this really angry lady yelling at my mum. Huh? B leaves the room to spectate, proceeds to hear angry entitled mother noises. I don't really remember much after that, other than that the management dragged her out of the room, and only then did she realise her room was on the 15th floor. Haha, <laughs> so silly, that's so silly. And our next story was posted by user Tentacles and Cupcakes, titled, My Baby Doesn't Wait in Line. So this is nothing compared to 99% of these stories, but it makes me roll my eyes every time. The elementary school bus stop is across from my house, and there are a lot of kids there, like 10 to 12 every day. They are actually mostly well behaved and line up nicely when they see the bus coming, except when e brings her kids and kindergartner. They wait in the car until the bus is coming. She takes him by the hand, walks up to the bus, and cuts in front of the whole line every time. I wonder why this lady doesn't want to teach her children how to be a polite member of society. This kid is going to get a rude awakening when mommy stops bringing him to the bus when he's a few years older. These kids are going to go all Lord of the Flies on him. And our last story was posted by user Mr. Monarch, titled, Entitled ex stepmom mother hits the side of my head, but karma bites her. So our car star, me, entitled mother, the Freddy Krueger. The backstory is, my dad was married to this creature for six years, and don't ask me how he was able to stay with her for so long, I'm still trying to figure that out. Also, before this incident, I have to add that I was kind of an accident years before I met her. My stepdad, really kind man, is a construction project manager, and he had to fire one of his employees for doing drugs on a project. So this former employee crackhead, cracked out of his mind, decided to drive up to our house and chuck a brick at our window. Well, as you can guess, throwing things while high on crack doesn't really work out that well, so he was aiming for our living room window and missed by three feet, while driving the brick flew and hit me dead center in the skull as I walk out the door. Well, an emergency room trip, brain surgery, metal plate, and three and a half week medically induced coma later, I was basically good, minus a concussion, and I was a little sensitive to light. So on to the story. I was visiting my dad and stepmom was in one of her moods, and asked me to do something while I was recording for a video project I had the next week. I said I couldn't because I had to finish my project. The conversation is as follows. Entitled Mother says, Listen, just do what I want or I'll take your computer. Entitled Mom, you didn't pay for it. I did. You know I had to use this to work over the weekend. 
don't yell back at me to your failure. She used this as an insult to us, but it never really worked because it didn't make sense. I agree, that doesn't make any sense. Do what I say or I'll get your father. Dad will agree that I need to get his done. Entitled mother. Now you listen to me. I'm your elder. You will respect me or I will punish you. Me. And if you do, I can literally pack my crap and walk the mile to my mom's. So you can try. This apparently set her off because she cocked her hand back and slapped me on the side of the head. She, however, didn't hit the side of my face, but the side of my head right above my ear. I really couldn't feel anything because I have nerve damage around there, so it felt kind of warm, I guess. She, on the other hand, literally sprained her wrist by slapping a metal plate full force. She tried to lie and said I grabbed her wrist, but I was able to prove her wrong because my computer was still recording when she hit me. So yeah, my dad's side of the family didn't really believe anything she said anymore. My dad finally divorced her three years later. Last I heard, she went to prison for assaulting one of my half-brother's teachers for a reason I can't really recall. Luckily, my dad got custody of him and she's still in prison now. What the... What are these stories? Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed that one today. Tell me what you think about it down in the description below. I hope you have a good day, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye!